Ham and uh, cheese and egg salad. Triple dipper. I just went with the uh, tuna mayo onigiri. Mm. So I watched that. I watched a documentary this morning about Robert Johnson, like mm. the original guy. That I saw that. The blues. I haven't seen it yet, but I saw it. It was, like, it was like music of the devil or something. Yeah. Probably not even close to what it's called, but. It was about how he like was just a novice guitar player and he disappeared in like Mississippi for like a year and he came back and was like the king of the guitar. So they say he went to the crossroads and made a deal with the devil and sold his soul to the yeah. devil to play blues music. Didn't the Karate Kid do a movie like that? The kid who played Karate Kid. Yeah, the movie's oh. called The Crossroads. Yeah. Yeah. So there you go. So, no, but this was, was a documentary you're mm-hmm. talking about. Mm-hmm. So he only has like two recordings. Now, one of them he did in San Antonio at the Gunther Sheridan Hotel in like room four, 14 or something. Mm. But he ended up like, uh, like everything that bad could happen to people happened to him. And then he started getting real confident, started living that like guitar blues player life. Jukebox he, hero. Yeah, so he started mm-hmm. kind of trifling around with another man's wife, mm-hmm. and he ended up serving him like a big bottle of liquor, and he drank it all that night, and then like two days later he died. And it's like all you kind of know, but like all they were, they had like Keith Richards on there, like telling his influence of how it was, and like a bunch of <clears throat> entertainers that up today that. He's like the father of the blues. Yes, he was. Mm. Kind of before BB King and all of that. Kind of paved the way. <clears throat> he said that when he showed up, he had an extra string on his guitar. He had a seven string <laughs> guitar that had never been done before. He explained like that now he had like a different sound to his guitar than anybody else. I put it on my list just the other day to watch. You know, legend tells it that Stevie Ray Vaughan did the same thing. Yeah. Man, he could play guitar. Stevie Ray? Oh, man. Texas Flood. Pride and Joy. And then, of course, the flatter one that I watched. Yeah. <laughs> I want to see that just for fun. I, I, it is, but you... You feel like I felt a little bit more dumb by watching it. Like, Which one was that? Abducted and no, not that one. It was the uh, it was the one about the flat Earth society. People would think oh, the, the flat Earth. Earth. Gotcha. Yeah, from behind the curve. <laughs> and Is it worth watching? It's worth seeing, like how delusional and conspiracy theorists that like NASA. Well, there's still people. Are they on this video? These, there's still people that believe we never went to the moon. Oh, that yeah. was all staged. Is that? Do they cover that too on there? Uh, yeah, I talked yeah. about a little bit of that. My dad was one of those people at one point in time that saw something on Discovery Channel or whatever it was that was like, no, oh, yeah. we never went to we the never moon because <laughs> there's a layer of something out there, radiation, no human can get past, and I'm like. There's a really old movie from the 70s. Is it the 70s or the early, early 80s? Um, called Capricorn One. And it's basically that space travel was it was all set up. And they, they catch them at it, you know, and it's a big conspiracy. And actually, the guy who plays Thanos in the Avengers, it's his dad, James Brolin, who's... Uh, the lead character in Capricorn One. So, Joe, how's the T- TLF life been? Mm. Counting down every day, man. Every day. How much longer you got? Five now. Now it came fully furnished? Yeah. So well, not the it? kitchen. Nothing for oh, the kitchen. Oh, really? Yeah, or bedding. No bedding. No towels. So just mattresses and an empty kitchen. Imagine those mattresses are real nice. 
Yeah. <laughs> Temper Pedics. I'm, huh? I'm, I'm on an air mattress. That's how nice they are. Uh, I do not look forward to that. No, we're supposed, but we're supposed the, to be in tower like two thirteen or something. Is what my note on my door said. Two thirty one, maybe. Yeah, maybe that's it. When do you guys go? Somewhere in June, like the end, end of June and almost all of July. At least you guys are getting air conditioning. We're not scheduled for air conditioning until spring of 2020. I'm not even selling my AC units either. Because I heard that we regulate your how cold it can be in your house and your house can still get hot. It ain't hot. Joe, you don't know. You ain't even I've been in. I've been in people's house with it. It ain't hot. Those are, those are whiners. I'm telling you. Those things work awesome. People want it to be like 66 degrees. Yeah, it ain't going to be 66 degrees. But it's cold. Let me tell you. I like it cold. Me too. I bought um, I bought Phillips air conditioner. He bought brand new last year. He sold it to me. So I'll have one upstairs and one downstairs. Just those, you know, portable yeah. units. And that's kind of how I'm going to play it. Like once, once I have it in and once I see how it goes, then I'll start unloading. Because I think I have three air conditioners. But what? The two Japanese ones I'll probably sell. I have one American one. I want to take that back with me. I just never know when I'm going to need a portable AC unit. Where'd you get the American one? Uh, one of the guys that PCS sold it to me. Do you wonder? I think nice. he brought it from the States. It's freaking like he's blowing up my shirt and showing my belly. <laughs> <laughs> one morning, just um, clicking around, and I see the something about um chalking tires it was found unconstitutional i read that yep you read it mm -hmm. wasn't that amazing i read the whole court document it was like four i didn't pages. read the whole court document but it was incredible so do you know the history of chalking like, tires like they, they see a car like at a bar no like in the police chalk them no 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 <laughs> Uh -oh. Sort of the same thing. Oh, I, it, the same, I guess it's the same principle. Yeah, technically. That would also be against the Constitution it now. It is. So a lot of places, when you park legally in a spot, the meter maid will walk around. and it's like two-hour parking or something. They'll chalk your tire, and they know the time that they chalk. So they chalk it at, at like 12 o'clock. They chalk your tire. Does it they, uh, depend on where they put it on the tire is the time? I don't know. I, I, I don't know the, the technique. But it's, a, it's an established the audio <laughs> it's an established um routine right a lot of places in the united states chalk the tire and then they and come been around doing it for decades decades so somebody somebody got a lot of tickets and they decided to sue and it went to the the local court and the local court found in favor of the county they said no this is good you can't do it and they appealed and it went to the state and the state court came back and said well you know what Actually, it's not good. It's unconstitutional, and here's why. And they laid out four arguments, and they said um, because of the Fourth Amendment search and seizure, um, you're not allowed to basically survey a law-abiding citizen for no reason without a warrant, without a reason, a warrant, like a judge, a, a judge warrant, or um, or uh, what cause. Uh, if you have cause so it, and they, they they really they laid it out so clear on four counts they just said yeah it's unconstitutional you can't do it so as it turns Amazing. out yeah chalking tires man because you're figure you're a law-abiding citizen parking your car in a legal spot within the time frame and they're surveying you mm -hmm. the government is now surveying you for no reason isn't that cool yeah i thought that was pretty cool of course, now they're just going to take a picture and timestamp you, and they're still going to be able to do it. But yeah. Bottom line is, can they do that though? Yes. You're Taking not the picture? Yeah. You're a public. You take pictures of public. That's true. Yeah. Good point. Yep. All right. So here's the other issue came up recently. It's pretty funny. Um, so I, you know how I watch a lot of YouTube. Yep. You You're the YouTube guy. I do. I watch. That's pretty much all I watch. That's and Netflix but so I was watching photography videos and I got you know one feeds the other feeds the other and it ended up being this boudoir photography guy in California 
he's very he's you, very charismatic. Wait, you got our attention. He gets better. <laughs> he's very charismatic. He does. What? He does. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So he does. He does fantastic work. I mean, he posts images. It's like incredible, beautiful pictures, and um, and so I'm watching more and more. And he's got like dozens of videos. So I keep watching them. There's about three of them. There's one on right above the trees over there. He's gone. That is a nice shot of the mountain right there. Right over the trees. Oh, yes. So, the bottom line is I got into it and I was thinking, I'd love to do this. I'd love to be a <laughs> Not because... <laughs> okay, so that's where your mind goes, right? Automatically. Uh, so, but listen. It's... A, yeah. Listen. <laughs> <laughs> Right. And I'm not even going to try to defend it. But I will tell you that I would enjoy doing it. (laughs) I'm sure. I'm not for for that. Who wouldn't? Who wouldn't? Our wives would enjoy it. I don't know. Okay, so that's the the point in the the story. With the well kept men of Misawa. So I asked my wife, I said, How would you feel about me shooting boudoir photography? No, just. Flat out no. No gave discussion. Me a, gave me a Jacob false right <laughs> off. Was like So no. you're done. What you're are done. you what are you talking about? I think was <laughs> what's a quote. <laughs> so you're basically done with boudoir. I'm done and that was the end. So now I don't even watch those <laughs> videos. You should have filmed the dental clinic. <laughs> Konnichiwa. Konnichiwa. Hi. Hi. Oh Sony. Nice. <laughs> yes. Yes. So we'll go to camera A. <clears throat> so anyways. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So anyway, that was, um, it was funny. So, so Joe's boudoir career started nice. and then just and listen, what ended I, right what, there. What I said was, it's not what, you know, I tried to defend it and it just doesn't work because immediately, but this guy makes on a shoot, he'll make like $1,500. He'll make $2,000 from these women who want to capture the way they are right now or um or make give it as a gift to their husband or their fiance or whatever and they're they're spending big bucks i mean crazy and then they he he interviewed this photographer in dc who does this um full time obviously and she's making like four hundred thousand dollars last year she made shooting this so maybe that had something to do with my interest. But crazy money. Crazy money. I, I almost bet you'd have done it for free. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you're talking for the, about. For the practice. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. You need an assistant, though. Yeah, with <laughs> <me know>. old <laughs> light. <you know? laughs> yeah. No, there's no, it's all natural lighting. That's the beauty of it. Oh. There's no lights. You don't need assistance. <laughs> This is the end, my only 